Welcome back to Packet Loss. In this episode, I'm going to be covering the use cases of app IDs, as well as a relatively new feature called application filtering tags. I'll be building off my previous videos in this series. So with that, let's get started. In our previous video, we touched on the importance of using app ID as much as possible when building security policies. But today, we'll be covering the why. To give you a brief rundown of what app IDs are, Think of this as the inspection that Palo Alto does at not just the transport layer, but also the application layers on traffic that traverses your network. Palo will create predefined app IDs that cover the categories, the subcategories, the risk factor, as well as the characteristics of these applications. A good example of why you should use app IDs is the port and protocol for TCP 22, which is commonly referred to as SSH. So if I look up SSH in my app ID database, I'm going to open it up. You'll notice TCP 22 is being utilized within this application. However, if you are using TCP 22 as a port and protocol, just as a service object within your policies, that is an issue. That is because other services such as SFTP and SCP both run on the same port and protocol as SSH. Enforcing the app ID in your policies prevents unintended access or permissions. As I mentioned, not only are your ports and protocols being used to classify your app IDs, but the characteristics of these app IDs as well. So a good example of this would be Reddit. Let's say in your network, you want to allow your users to be able to access reddit.com and be able to browse the website unimpeded. However, you do not want to allow them to post. In this case, what you would be doing is allowing the base level application to the website itself and preventing the posting application. To do this, you would only obviously allow in your security policy, the dash base application, and then exclude the dash posting application. And for reference on what any of these posting or base level applications do, hover over them or click on them and on the top right under the description, it will give you a brief overview of what this app ID does. Keep in mind, if an app ID is not present for the traffic flow you are wanting to classify, you can always build a custom app ID by clicking on add on the bottom left. But because this topic is much more in depth than what I'm trying to cover or convey in this episode, that's gonna be covered in a later episode of this series. Likewise, if you are wanting to use multiple app IDs, you can do that by creating an application group. To do this, on the bottom left, click on Add, Name Your Application Group, click on Browse, and identify which app IDs you want to utilize within this group that then can be applied into your security policy. The advantage to this is instead of individually selecting within your security policy all of your app IDs, just build a group based around whatever you need. Also, later in this video, I'm going to be covering how to use application filters and why you should use them dynamically within your rule base. LAN web browsing is the policy we created originally to define our traffic, and even with that, it's still pretty generic. If we open up this policy and take a look under the Usage tab, under Compare Applications and Applications Seen, we'll see more than just SSL and web browsing app IDs being used. What we want to do is because other app IDs are dependent on SSL and web browsing, we are going to be creating more explicit and dynamic policies to better structure our rule base. This is where I'll be introducing app ID filters. As PA realized, it's nearly impossible to manage every single content update that comes on your firewalls. So to combat this, if you go under your objects tab, under application filters, click on add. You'll see just like you would normally in your applications tab, all of your app IDs, as well as their tags and characteristics. These tags are heavily important because every time a apps and threats release version updates on any of your existing firewalls with 10 code and above, as well as any inline SAS security options, these will be dynamically updated to identify any applications on your firewall to include all of the characteristics seen on this right hand side under this column, as well as the tags. The emphasis on the tags is because this is what is dynamically being updated to allow you to build filters around whatever they are. So for instance, if I click on uploading, this is going to show me all of my uploading app IDs seen within my app ID database. However, whenever I build a policy, whether it be to allow or deny 
based on whatever policy action I define, I can exclude certain applications from being utilized within that policy. Let's build out some app ID filters. The ones we're gonna be building out today are gonna to classify entertainment video, proxy avoidance, and uploading. So let's start off by clicking on uploading. You'll notice all of our uploading variants are seen down below. We're gonna name this filter, so uploading-filter. We're gonna do the same for the others. This is gonna be entertainment filter. And the last one being my proxy avoidance filter. Keep in mind, when I start building out these security policies, they're going to allow the uploading variants as well as the entertainment variants. But because I don't wanna allow any unknown proxies or VPNs on my network, I'm gonna be setting the policy action to deny for the proxy avoidance filter. And as I said earlier, if I chose to exclude any known applications, I can exclude them by clicking on the far right under that filter itself and clicking on exclude and it will exclude it from whatever policy action is defined within my policies. Now that we've built out our filters, let's build our policies. Keep in mind, we'll need to build these above our original LAN web browsing policy as we want the filter policies to take precedence over our original policy. So let's build them out. So the first one, we're gonna call it LAN app ID filter. 001, because there's gonna be multiple. And in the description, let's identify what app ID filter is being utilized. So in this case, it's gonna be proxy avoidance, and then define our variables within all of our tabs. So our source is gonna be trust L3, 50.0 slash 24, destination untrust L3, destination address is gonna be anything, application, we're gonna search for proxy, and on the bottom, you'll notice application filter, proxy avoidance filter, all right? Service URL category, we need to make sure that because this is an app ID dependent policy, application default is selected. Under the actions tab, let's make sure this is set to deny, all right? And then let's click okay. So let's find that policy. So from here, let's move this above our LAN web browsing policy. All right, so here's our first policy. So let's create a new one. So instead of building it out manually like I did prior, I'm gonna clone this policy and just change the variables within the policies. So in this case, it's gonna be entertainment video. Here's our filter. Under actions, instead of deny this time around, it's gonna be allow. And we're gonna clone it again. We're gonna make sure it goes after filter two. And this one is gonna be for uploading. And under the actions tab, let's make sure that's being allowed, right? Uploading under our description to identify. And once that's done, let's commit these changes. Now that our policies have been built, let's do some actual validation checks. The first one I wanna do is against my proxy avoidance filter because the policy action is defined as deny. Anytime we visit or even try to remotely access a known proxy or VPN application, it should deny my access. To test this, I'm gonna to go to a known one called Ultrasurf. And if I access this website and I'm allowed to get in, that is a huge issue. So I'm gonna click on it. And as expected, our connection is being reset, so that's a very good sign. Going back to my actual Apollo, let's hover over the policy name and click on Log Viewer. And as expected, Ultrasurf is outright being denied by this policy, so it's working as intended. So let's test the other one, which is gonna be our entertainment filter. And we know YouTube is a very common application under entertainment. So we're gonna go to youtube.com. And from here, I'm just gonna click on a easy jazz video 
keep the vibes moving, right? And we know that's going to be running in the background. Let's hover over our policy name and click on Log Viewer. And this one is also working as intended. It's showing YouTube base as, as if we are actually accessing this application and just browsing whatever video we're looking for. So these filters are working as intended. The same concept can be applied to any kind of tags or filters you define within your application filters. The other validation check I wanna run is through the GUI. Under the device tab, under troubleshooting, we're gonna do a test sec policy match against the new application filters that I created. Right, so the from zone is going to be from trust L3, just like, like we did in our security policy, and then to untrust L3. Let's define a source IP that's going to be within my subnet range, so a 50.3 for instance. Destination, we'll use Google's public DNS server just for the purpose of testing, and the port is going to be 444. That's a commonly used port for any of our applications, protocol being TCP, but this time around, I want to define an application. So we knew YouTube was working, so let's make sure that it's actually working as intended on a test security policy match. So under application, I selected YouTube base. I'm going to run this and it's actually showing app ID filter two, which is a good sign. And it's actually showing me a breakdown of all the applications that are being utilized within this filter. Let's do the same thing for UltraSurf. Run that showing my proxy avoidance filter, right? All the proxy avoidance apps that have been identified and all of the commonly used ports within those. And the last one, let's just select a random uploading application. So Adobe, uh, Adobe meeting uploading, right? Execute that and app ID filter three. So everything is working as intended. And just like in the GUI, we're gonna move to the CLI now to do some validation checks. So. In previous episodes, we covered the test security policy match kit man, and we're going to do that again. So test security policy match from, it's going to be trust dash at L3 source is going to be 192.168.50.4 in this case. And then we're going to do two on trust L3 destination, which is going to be same as the IP that we threw in for Google's DNS server. And then destination port being 443 protocol six for TCP. However, this time around, we're gonna do application. I will do ultra surf, right? Showing our first filter for proxy avoidance, showing that it's gonna be denied. And then let's change that application to Adobe and we can tab through this and let's get the one for upload. So meeting dash upload. All right, I'm going to show our third filter. And then finally, it's going to be the YouTube filter, right? For entertainment, right? So YouTube base shows filter two. Everything looks good. So for reference, if you ever need to use this command, test security policy match, like I've shown in previous episodes, this is going to be used primarily to test source destination IP, port and protocol. And then you can add on to that to test applications as well. In conclusion, I hope this video helped you learn how to manage app IDs in an effective manner on your Palo Alto firewalls within your network. Please note, I plan to cover custom app IDs in a future video as referenced prior. I've also included some helpful KVS articles below, as well as the public app ID database from Palo Alto. Thank you again for watching, and if you have any suggestions, please leave a comment below.